first drive. Hey, what's everybody? Smiley from Parallel Defense. I'm out here with Chef JBF, Jason. Uh, if you guys have been watching, you know, I've been kind of teasing at some night vision stuff. Uh, pretty much want to get into our basics. Uh, Jason's a really good friend of mine. I've known him for a couple of years now, a decent amount of years. And uh, we talk this shit every day, in and out. And I kind of want to get his feedback, his information to give to you guys for those of you guys that are new, learning. Um, it'll be a series where I'll do it with a couple, di couple different people that have an understanding of night vision and kind of have either a basic, novice, or even an expert amount of knowledge to give to you. So, Jason, go ahead. Hey, man. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, a couple of things just um, when it comes down to it. How much do you want to spend? What do you want to see? Um, you can get lost in the sauce with mm -hmm. specs, FOM, what your EBI is, Halo, SNR, and if these terms are completely going over your head, do a little bit of research. Don't dive too deep because, it's, like I said, it's a cavern of nothingness that you can just get lost in. But those are just some basic things that you can just pick up take a look at it, compare and contrast, and then make your own educated decision from there. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about personal preference and uh, what you kind of want to do. And um, some people say, oh, let me just go Gucci. I just want to buy those or even, let's say this, quads. Yeah. Um, you can do that. If you got money to blow, that's fine. Um, nobody's po uh, pocket watching. But if you just want something to see in the, the night and just go for either patrol or just something to be able to fight under low light or no light conditions. Uh, my first suggestion is always gonna be a solid PVS-14. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be green phosphorus, white phosphorus. Um, I know, well Devin, you had your, your vision corrected. I'm, yep. My vision is corrected with glasses, but I know that for my eyes, I see overlapping fields a little bit better under green phosphorus, even though I run primarily white. The reason why I run primarily white, because I'm mostly in urban areas. I'm not over here <laughs> doing crazy things and you know, 300, 400 yard um, engagement zones by anything like that, but something that works for me and my environment that I use, so. Yeah, so PV, again, right, with, with price, and that's one thing that's gonna take a lot of people off. Um, night vision is not cheap, and you'll hear it in and out. Uh, there are cheap options, but again, night vision is, it's not like the gun industry where, you know, you might be able to get a really good CZ pistol for 300 bucks, and that'd be considered cheap, and you can run the shit out of it. Night vision is not like that. If you're buying cheap night vision, you're not gonna get what you want and you're gonna constantly be digging into a deeper rabbit hole trying to find something. So for example, my very, very first type of night vision anything was the Psyonix camera. Uh, amazing tool, amazing asset, but there are shortfalls in terms of actually being able to utilize it when you want to go shoot. Um, for a game camera or for something, cause, uh, excuse me, Psyonix is a night vision device, it's a camera. Um, and when you use it there, again, the shortfalls are like, you have a little bit of lag, you don't have as much clarity, you need um, artificial light to use it kind of at the best. With actual night vision goggles, like a PVS-14, which is a monocular, or the 1432s that myself and Jason are running, um, you don't need ambient light. Um, and that's where some of those specs that Jason was talking about will come into. But again, right, it's going to be price. Uh, myself, I was able to get into some Omni 8-2s, their Gen 3 tubes, Green Falls, for about 4,500, which is very, good as far as pricing some that's, of you guys might a come up yeah it's, a, a, it's a huge come up some people hear that and be like 4500 it, it's not cheap um but it's definitely worth it if it's something you want to invest in if you're a doomsday prepper if you're a hunter uh somebody that just likes to larp right that's one term that people are now starting to accept again mm -hmm. uh and you want to you want to get your money's worth so don't cheap out again uh i say you can get into a, a decent pvs 14 for what like 22 to 2500 give or take and that all depends on what's going on in the world in the market. Let's just be frank. Yeah. Um, if this was two months ago, you could have got it probably eh, for 19, 2200 bucks. Now things are on the rise. People are starting to become a little bit more conscious um, about what's going on in the world. You're looking at probably 26, 2700 bucks. But again, comes down to housing, um, specs on the tube and what tubes you're running. So. so. And again, 2,500 is not bad uh, when you're looking at it. Some of us have more than $2,500 in guns. Uh, Lucas at T-Rex Arms always does videos talking about uh, collapsing your collection and investing more in your kit, right? If you're somebody who's watching this video or somebody who wants to get into it, your kit should be a priority. Jason and myself started with vest, right? You get a vest, you try it out, and you go from there. Obviously, it's good to take people's opinions into consideration and sure. see like, hey, do you like this? Do you like that? So for example, with vests, I started with a Cry JPC. Now I'm running a Spiritus LV, was it 113? 119. 119, and it's so much better for me, but you kind of have to go out there and play with it for stuff like that. 
For night vision, you kind of want to make, in my opinion, two or three jumps and kind of call it there. You don't want to sit there and be jumping through vests or through guns like you normally would because it is expensive. So you can go from a $2,500 14, a couple years later, jump into some uh, 1431s, a couple years later, maybe to some 31s. Right, and I will say this, um, one thing about the night vision market, it tends to hold its weight and or get more expensive. So let's say you, a year ago, you invested in a PVS 14 that was $2,100. You're running great specs, great tubes. You haven't put a lot of hours on it. And you can go on the forums, you can go on tax swap, you can go on Facebook groups, you can go on just the regular IG, sell this page, tag, tag them and keep it going. You're nine times out of 10 gonna make your money back and increase on that. So just FYI. Yeah, that's, that's what a lot of people do. They jump in, uh, they get a two. We have a friend, Don, mm -hmm. he's running a PVS 14 and now he's, he's had it for about two years now. Two years. And now he's looking into getting into some dual tubes. So running something like a BND, BNVD 1431 or even a 31 variant. Right. So, but don't get caught up in those in all those things. Do your research. Um, I'll have a friend of mine from SFUP. He'll come on here. He'll talk specs. He'll talk finding them. He was just like us and then just did tons of research. He agreed to jump on here and, and give you guys kind of where it's at. Uh, Jason mentioned earlier, forums, Facebook groups. Facebook groups are going to be your best place to find them. Um, you do have retailers. Some people are not too keen on spending that much or sending that much money to another individual. Um, so you have U.S. Night Vision. What is it? Steel Industries. Steel Industries. Custom Night Vision. My my fellow Canadians up north, Op4 Night Night Solutions. Um, there's plenty of folks out here. When it really comes down to buying from a, a box retailer, what I like to call them, you're really when it comes down to it. Everybody sells kind of the same shit. Yep. It really just comes down to who's offering the best warranty. That aftermarket, that customer service after the purchase is what I mainly focus on. This is a big high dollar purchase item. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you're getting duals, binos, or just a single single monocular. Yep. So just bear that in mind. So that's good to keep in mind. If you don't mind showing us yours and kind of yeah. talking about them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So of course I'm bougie as shit. I keep mine always in a case because uh, shit breaks. Um, my 1431s are this, they got this nice Nacorum wrap. Again, from Op4 Night Solutions. Great, great dude, Z is the man. Um, I'm running the NNVT tubes. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get some eyes rolling in the comments, cool. Listen, when it comes down to it, this is what I chose and this is what I ran because it's for my environment. I don't like to get lost in sauce saying that. You gotta run the best, highest, farmest tubes because that's not it. There's a lot of disadvantages from running extremely high farm stuff sometimes. And like, again, do your research, talk to some folks. It is what it is. Um, but I'm running, again, the 1431, the Argus 1431s with these focus caps. These are expensive as shit, but to me, they're needed. Um, if you go in and out of, um, let's say, from light to dark situations and you want to save your tubes and don't want anything to happen, I always just flip these down just in case. It's a quick flip. Some people run the irises. Um, but on this, I've got running the RPO 3.0 um, glass. And this to me is, first of all, saves on weight and on overall width of the tube in the unit. Um, for that, you know, it's, it's good for me. The white foss again, and um, it cost a grip. So it is what it is. So I'll go over my setup. I'm running uh, green phosphorus BNVD 1431s. They're Omni 8 tubes. Uh, I really, really was pressed on getting into some white tubes, but again, you got to understand the market. Uh, that's what's kind of popping right now. That's what's popular. Everybody wants white phosphorus. Uh, again, my friend at SFUP was like, dude, jump into some green tubes and then tell me how you feel. I got in them and there's, to me, there's no difference. I, I ran Jason, I ran mine. A little bit of clarity specs, but I can still do everything I need to do. I'm not losing anything major, if that makes sense. Minor details, yes, nothing crazy. Um, like Jason mentioned, I am running irises. Shameless plug. Uh, my boy, One Tap Samurai, you guys can get them with him. Again, one thing that I did not know, um, and obviously you can speak to a little bit more, yeah. when you're using these and you're passively aiming through your actual optic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one tap Samurai is the one that's talking about this, Alexander. These irises and even your caps will help give you a crisper dot Correct. when you're looking through them. So if you guys don't know, if you're new and you're trying to figure out what all this stuff is, um, you can open and close these and it allows, it changes the amount of light coming into the tube. So. Uh, some people call them daytime caps just so they can check their batteries and stuff like that. But what I've noticed when I'm using them under night vision is when I'm outside and it's pitch black, sometimes it's almost too dark. You go ahead, turn the dial and now open it up, allowing more light into the night vision device. So now I can see a little bit better. Right. But when I'm going to look through passively through an actual optic, not a lamb or a, an IR device that's giving me a laser, um, I definitely close them to give me that crisper dot. So if you want to speak to that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, so if, 
referring to the iris is it's in all actuality it's a camera aperture that's, that's mm -hmm. basically what it is you're uh, either opening up to increase light intake or you're closing it to decrease light intake so like i said the image can if there's no ambient light um, there and the aperture is closed to the minimum it's going to look dark in your tubes um, but if you happen to but here's the, also a flip side of that um, Depending on how you set your focus, um, a lot of people set it at, to an infinity focus, which allows you to see more things out, even all the way out to the stars. But you do lose within this, I'd say, three to five, uh, one foot to five foot radius on clarity. So what the iris does, instead of you having to go and focus your um, diopters and all this jazz, you just close that iris and it makes everything that you can see, even up to your hand or to your face, you can see it clearly and visibly. So just like you were saying, shooting passively through um, an optic, it allows you to actually see clearly through that optic. Which I'll have some videos of that. I'll have some B-roll going so you guys can see some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about LAM. So shout out to Chris from US Night Vision. I took a course with CGS Group out in California. Dope course, it was a US Night Vision 101 course and I learned a lot, right? Um, my background in night vision is operational. Um, I use them for work, that was it. Uh, PV, I knew monocular, binocular, that was it. So getting into the game a little bit, you start to learn more. At the course, um, Chris talks about some of the specs that Jason mentioned earlier and how they could affect um, what's going on. So pretty much, if you have these super strong tubes and you're using a full power laser, believe it or not, that can kind of go negative, negative, and you can start having more trouble utilizing that full power laser and burning images into your tubes if the laser is a full power laser for short. Uh, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, <laughs> they're, they make filters as well. Um, main things we all know, just like any camera, um, these are just as sensitive. So extreme bright light, looking at the sun, look even looking at the a full moon can potentially damage your tubes. Um, when he talks about uh, full power lasers hitting it, it's mainly the green lasers that we have to worry about, but who's running a visible green when you're under nods? We don't know, but it happens. There's somebody out There's there. There's somebody doing. out there, for sure. <laughs> but um, if a laser just happens to skip across your nods, is it gonna burn immediately? No, but uh, under large concentrated amounts, it potentially can. And I think uh, Dirty Civilian did a whole breakdown on yep. what happens while that's going while on. While that's going on. Yeah. So go ahead and so. check out Dirty Civilian. Um, again, this yeah. is kind of just a beginner for people that have right. no idea and want to get into just some for, stuff for you guys to write down. Mm -hmm. um, LAMs, again, they're laser aiming modules. You guys can find some. That's another area, right? When you talk night vision as a whole, we're not just talking about your actual device. Right. It's full encompassing of everything from the gun you're running to the helmet you have on to the actual night vision to the laser aiming module to your lights. There's so much encompassing in yeah. night vision that a lot of people do get under or overwhelmed and like they back out. But again, you don't have to go ahead and drop 30 grand up front. You can take your time and buy them little by little. Right. I will say to piggyback on what he said, everything comes at a cost in this game. And I will say this is a more elevated, you know, pinky out social type <laughs> deal, whatever. It, it, it Is it a flex? Some of it. It's, it's cool, whatever. But I will say this, if you buy a set of nods, whether it be a monocular or a bino, just make sure you budget enough for a lamb. Yep. Yes, you can passively aim, but if you really want to take advantage of that, using that system, buy a lamb. So you're going to look at from, you know, $7.99, $5.99 and up. Yep. And I'd say always try to get something either that has a, an onboard illuminator or have an illuminator solution like I have on one of my rifles here with a vampire light using um, the Steiner CQBL with the vampire light in conjunction to a Unity Axon sync switch. So it allows me to shoot both the lamb and the light at the same time to mimic, i.e., an all-in-one device. Yeah, so. so me and Jason will be shooting tonight. Um, I am running a brand new weapon. I do not have a lamb on it, so you guys will see videos of me passively aiming, and then I'll also have some footage of Jason using his lambs to show you guys kind of the pros and cons. Uh, some people out there hate passively aiming. Um, Navy SEAL from G GBRS Group. What's his name? He hates it. He talks about looking through a tube, through a tube. We'll kind of not debunk it, but talk about it later. Everybody has their preference for shooting. Everybody picks and chooses what they want. So just understand that the lambs are there to help you. They're an additive uh, force multiplier, if you will. And it's something you want to look into. Um, Brass Facts actually has a phenomenal, it's like an hour long video, him and Hop going over kind of the industries. The tier groups yeah, of Yeah, the tier lambs. groups of lambs. And you yeah. have your cheap ones, which again, I hate using the word cheap. I'm a really big budget guy. If you guys follow my channel, you know I'm always talking about budget this, budget that. Uh, 
know what you're buying, review it. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. People will talk about fake PEC 15. It's, it's about the performance aspect. And I, I always talk about people looking into that. You have your, what's a mall running? Five grand? No, it's like $3,600 retail. Okay, well you have yeah. your expensive lambs. $3,200 is still a nice set of nods if you wanted yeah. to put it that way. But then you also have your budget options like your Hollow Suns or your Somo gear. Something that's going to give you what you want. Being able to have a laser aiming device under night vision. So look into that, check that video out. Uh, but again, keep watching the video. I'm gonna have some B-roll in the front of myself and Jason shooting. I'm gonna have some B-roll over going so you guys can see all of it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, drop them in because the next episode is gonna be with Cade. Jason, I appreciate you being out here, big dog. Yeah, bro. Uh, Y'all have a good one.